the slope of a line, it's always going to boil down to the same number regardless of which two points on the line we choose. So l let's do another example now, okay? Oh, knocked that on the ground. Okay, so I'm going to choose a couple of points. Okay, what can you tell me about the slope of this line just really quick? It, okay, it is a linear. Yeah, it's a line. Negative. The slope's negative. Can you just tell that just instantly, just looking at it? From left to right, what is it doing? It's going down. Okay. So, so it has negative slope. So probably the first thing you better do when you look at a line like that and you're supposed to be finding the slope of it, is you, you if, if I were you, I would say m equals negative something. I would just go ahead and put the negative in, okay? Because so often we forget what we're doing there. And then we just start looking at the rise and the run. Now in this case, the rise is a little weird. It's, it's negative one, two, three, four, five, six. Is that weird to say that the rise is negative six? That's down six, right? So usually, before my class, rise for you guys was always up, right? Okay. Now rise can mean up or down. So when your parents tell you to, to rise up in the morning and get out of bed, you can just lay there, and then when they complain, you can be like, uh, I was rising, but it was negative rise. Um, Are you smiling behind those masks? Do you, any, would that work for any... any If one of my kids would have said that to me, I would have laughed at least. Then drug them out of bed. Okay. What about the run? Okay. Uh, can you make that better? Okay. Negative two over one. If we chose different points on this line, would it matter? Like if I chose this point way down here, I might get I might get negative twelve, and then uh, negative six or sorry, positive 6, so down 12 over 6, is that still negative 2? Yeah, it's still going to work regardless of which two points on the line you choose. Um, so when you're, you know, when you're given a line, you guys can find the slope, you can, you can make that happen. Let's talk about the two weird ones. And I'm not talking about two of you guys. This line, can I make that dark enough? Can you see where it is? That line right there, and let's look at this line right here. I'll make it a little thick so you can see where it is. Okay? Those two. The, the slopes, when we look at these two lines, things get a little bit weird. Um, if we choose a couple of points on this line, what's the rise? Okay. And the run is one, two, three, four. Now you could choose different points, but every single time, what's the rise going to be? And it, zero divided by any number is zero. It has zero slope. It's not going up, it's not going down. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Still a function. Um, if we made a table for it, it would be uh, x is all kinds of things. But what is y always? And so the equation of that line is simply y equals 3. Because x doesn't matter. Like literally in this case, x does not matter y equals 3 regardless. Do you remember that? You need to remember that this line has a slope of 0. Now let's take a look at this line right here. Let's choose a couple of points. Okay. So the rise in this case. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
And I could choose different points and get a different rise. But what's the run? Zero. Okay. Now, can we take, yeah, we can't take five things and divide them into zero groups, can we? I see you think about that for a second. Yeah. You know, I can't take, I can't take five dollars and divide it into zero groups. It, it's got to go somewhere. It just doesn't work. It just, so we say it's undefined, but the, the fact of the matter is it just doesn't make sense. It, it's just not something we can do. So this slope is undefined. And that is the case for every single vertical line. Every vertical line, the slope is undefined. And if we looked at a table for this one, x is always going to be 3. And y might be all kinds of th things. But x is always a 3. So what's the equation? Yeah, yeah, the slope's undefined, but the equation is simply x equals 3, and there's no y in the equation because y doesn't matter. In this case, y doesn't matter. Okay? Now, does this one have a y-intercept? No. Wait, yes. yes. It does. Now, here's how you know. Is there a y in the equation? Yes. Then there, it has a y-intercept. Does this one have a y-intercept? No. No. And how can you tell? Well, there's no y in the equation. If there's not a y in the equation, then it doesn't have a y-intercept. Is that pretty straightforward? Okay. Um, let's look at tables now. So, most times, you're not going to see the graph of something. You, and then, you know, i got to figure out what the slope is. A lot of times, what you see is a table. So, you know, oh, if I put a 4 in, I get a 20 out. If I put a 7 in, I get a 14 out. If I put a 10 in, I get an 8 out. If I get a 13 uh, in, I get a 2 out. So first of all, is that a function? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it linear? So the question is, is there a constant thing going on here? So um, I'm going to look here. What's happening each time? Okay, so negative 6. And what's happening here each time? Okay, Ooh, plus 3. So is that a constant thing that's happening? So that's a linear type function. That's a constant rate of change. Now you notice I talked about the change in y first. Why? George, why am I talking about the change in y first? That's right. Rise over run. Okay, I'm thinking about what is the rise. That's the change in y. And then I'm thinking about the run. That's the change in x. And there's your slope. And if we, if we want to say negative 2 over 1, that would be better. Okay? So we have, we have the slope of this line just looking at a table. Now, if we just had some random points in here, it would be a lot harder to figure out the slope. Um, but I'm going to tell you, if you have two points, you can figure out the slope. Remember, remember back here, how we just had two points? We were able to find out the slope, weren't we? Anytime you have two points, and you know it's a line, you can figure out what the slope is. Um, we'll talk about how to do that a little bit better later, but for now, just, just as long as you know that. Okay, so... Take a look at this input-output table. Does that look like a function? No. Yes. Think hard. No. 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 Yes, that's a function. Do you, do you know, if we put in three, what always comes out? Two. Are you confident when you put something in about what's going to come out? Yes. yes. It's a function. Okay, it is a function. Uh, you'll notice that the change in y is zero. is zero. And the change in x is 
plus yeah. one. Although it doesn't really matter. What's zero divided by anything? Zero. Okay, so the slope of this line is zero. What do you think the equation of this line is? Y equals two. Yeah, y equals two. Doesn't matter what x is, right? Y equals two. Okay, so I guess you know what I'm going to put on here next, right? Uh, okay, so uh, change in y? Three. Three. Change in x? Zero. Zero. Oh, I didn't ask you if it's a function oh, or not. No, it's, not yeah. function. It's, it's not a function, is it? No. no, this is the weird one. We. It doesn't matter what you put in for x, you, you get all kinds of stuff out for y, don't you? Yeah. Okay, we put, and, we, and re really we only have one choice of what we're putting in for x too, don't we? So, what would you say about the slope? Undefined. And what would you say about the equation of this line? There you go. X equals negative three. Um, you learned something today? Okay. We'll do do a little bit more of it tomorrow. Good job, guys. See ya.